Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of React WooCommerce Theme Development with REST API. In the previous video, we've been starting to build the checkout form, so we'll continue further with that. So we were building the label. Uh, for label, we're also going to need the abbreviation in case if the user, uh, like if those fields are like required, then uh, we want to have uh, some kind of an abbreviation. And again, we can build a small component for that as well. So we'll go ahead and create another file called ABBR and just paste the code and explain it to you. So basically this is another component and uh, and inside of this we basically say if it's required or not we import the prop types. So required will be boolean type and initially it will be false and then depending on whether it's required or not. So let's say if it's not required then we don't render this particular component uh, but if it is required then we say abbreviation we give it some class name styles and we'll say title required and we put star there okay so now we're going to use that there so we'll say abbr and then here we'll say required equals required so you're already pulling that information over here in the input field of course we have to pass it in the address we'll do that in a moment but i'm just showing it to you uh, like building at least this one completely okay uh, then inside of that we say input and inside of input we say type equals type type equals type on change equals on change handle on change value equals value again we're pulling all of that information from here Okay, so value will become input value, not value. Okay, and then placeholder will be equal to the placeholder. Uh, type is type, name will be equal to name. So we'll do the class name. It's a pretty long class name, so I'll just do copy paste there. So there you go, put the class names. You can copy that from GitHub. Then ID will be input ID. Okay, so we pulled all of that data from here okay last thing we need to do is do the errors so we need the error component as well so we'll say form elements so we'll go inside of the root and we'll say errors inside of that we'll paste that and uh, all this is doing is just accepting two props errors and field name and they're just saying if errors are available and errors has its own property of field name then go ahead and display this otherwise don't display anything okay you can rather say this null, return null, all right? And uh, this is invalid feedback, d block, uh, text red 500. So whatever classes you want to give, you can give that for handling errors. I'm going to close that and just pull that here. So we'll say error. So notice what's happening. Like component is handling the conditions on its own, whether or not it needs to be rendered. So that's pretty useful because then we don't have to do like multiple if else conditions here. You know, component is going to render if it has the data. If it doesn't have th that required data, then it's not going to render. Okay, so I'll remove that. And then we'll also say export default input field. And on inside of the error, we have to pass two things that it accepts. One is errors, which is errors. And second is the field name, which will basically be the name, which are being, both values are being passed from here. So name and then errors okay now that we have this component we also have to put some default prop types so i'm gonna do a copy paste there so we'll say default props handle on change empty function uh, input value type text and all of those default values basically and the type of each of these props okay and then of course we have to import the prop types on top and say import prop types import prop types from prop types right right there we go Excellent. Okay, so you have prop type dot function, prop type dot string, uh, name, type, label, placeholder, all of these guys. All right. And I'll just check if other components are fine. So abbreviation looks good. Export default abbreviation. Input field looks good. And now we can directly use that here inside of the user address. So inside of the user address, we can say input field. Okay. And it's already imported that on top. notice done that here okay and inside of input field requires certain data uh let me close that one 
so it requires all of this data right so it's going to need to have the name so for name we'll say first name uh, input value will be input first name okay so notice in the default value we put that as first name that's what we're pulling that from and then we'll say this will be required so this is pretty useful because i can just pass required and that and done you know the component is going to handle that automatically then we'll say handle on change equals handle on change label equals first name this is pretty useful because you know you can just let the component handle everything errors it will handle the errors on its own we don't need to worry about it just pass the data shipping is shipping we just pass is shipping so this will decide whether uh, it'll add that extra suffix that whether it's shipping or or billing as an extra id so then we can catch hold of that element as in when we need it okay then we need the container class so we'll have width full you know i'm gonna copy paste that okay so container class name there that's great okay before it shows on to the front end we also have to use this component here in the checkout form.js so let's use that so i'm going to say address okay i think we've not exported it right yeah we have to do export default default uh, address now we can say address and notice that it should have pulled on top yep it's pulled on top great and uh, let's start passing the data so we have to pass the states so notice that this is shipping details so we have to use the the shipping states which is here uh, of course we will get the data later on but we're just passing that here for now then uh, countries so countries will be shipping countries this one input so input will be input shipping okay so when we set the input this input is going to contain all of this data that we have for example the shipping and billing all of these data so that's what we're trying to access input dot shipping so anytime you see me adding the input and dots something something um, understand that in the initial state will change and all of this data will be updated and input will have access to that so set input is going to update this data and then input will contain all of this data the default plus whatever has changed so you can access everything with input okay like the errors the name the shipping beer billing details all of that stuff okay so now handle on change equals so this will give me event event and this will be handle on change i'm going to pass event and then true and then true so we'll have to modify the handle on change also to accept those parameters let's do that so handle on change is going to take event is going to take is shipping yes or no so false initial will be false is billing yes or no so false as initial state so three parameters and we'll, we'll get to that uh, we'll, we'll get, that, get to that in a moment okay so we've got the handle on change and then we'll say is fetching states whether or not it's fetching states or not so remember that we have already created uh, initialize a state for that to manage in case if the states are being fetched or not okay so is fetching billing states is fetching shipping states this is shipping so this will be and then is shipping is billing or shipping so by passing these guys i'm just saying this is equal to true you know like that so either i do that or i just pass like that same thing goes over here as well i'm passing this is true if i just pass this it means that the value of these guys will automatically become true so inside of this is going to accept is shipping as true and is billing or shipping as true i don't think we need that i don't think we need is billing or shipping so we leave that okay now we're going to see if that appears onto the front end so now you can see that the front end has the first name and similarly we have to create the other fields also so i'm not going to manually type all these because it'll take too much time i'm just going to do a copy paste now that you understand one of them you'll understand the others that the same way the others also work so i'll go to the the address and um, inside of the address i'll put the other input fields i put the um, first name similarly i'll put the other address fields also let's do that okay so i'm going to paste this here okay so inside of this div now we have okay let me just minimize these guys 
So I'm going to comment on the country selection. We haven't created that yet. But you see all of the inputs are here and then two inputs are inside of this div one and two. Okay. First and last name are there and then everything else is like outside of the input field but inside of this main. Okay. A main container. Now if you go and check the front end, you can see that you've got first name, last name, company name, street address, town and city, which is great. Next thing we need is the country name also. So we need the country selection component. So we're going to create that. But before we did that, we just need to add some prop types. So let's do that. Address dot prop types. We have to import prop types on top. So let's import prop types on top. And now we have the default props, each of the uh, props type, like this is object, this is array, this is function, boolean, boolean, and some default values for this. Okay. Uh, and then, so now we have to create the country selection. So, so far we've got the input fields. And now in the next video, we're going to do the country selection. Okay. So I hope you did like the video so far. If you did, please give a thumbs up and do subscribe to my channel if you aren't already. And do start my repository to support my work and follow me on Twitter and hit the super thanks as well and follow me on twitter my twitter handle is query tech i'm gonna see you in the next video thank you very much bye bye